Hey, everybody. Welcome to the March 2016 edition of the Bizarre Briefing. Hey. I'm Bryce Castillo. Yo. I'm joined with Brant Hughes. Brant Hughes. And John Tilton. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the show where the three of us, the behind the scenes crew, the behind the scenes to live crew. Whoa. Whoa. I didn't say it. No, you just tweeted it a lot. Yep. Uh, uh, get together and talk about what it's like to do all the things we're involved in. Scam school, scam stuff, and scam, modern rogue, mm. all these great things. Bring it to your faces. Oh, and for people who are watching on the YouTube channel, we broadcast this live uh, every last Monday of the month at 3-ish p.m. on diamondclub.tv. So. Central. 3-ish central. Right. Time. Smart. Smart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just t- check our Twitters. That's if, if 4 you, yeah, p.m. Eastern yeah. or 2 p.m. Pacific. Thank you, John. Though right? we also didn't, <laughs> we also didn't tweet out early that we were going to do this episode. Yeah, usually, so you probably have a, a better. You, you, you probably got about 15, 20 minute head start on yeah. when we're about to. So do what you need to do is you ha- need to have send push notifications whenever any of us tweet. Yeah. Yeah. So go just, into your settings. Set up yep. email. Push notifications. SMS notifications. SMS, yeah. D- yep. Got to get the SMS. Uh-huh. Uh, get an IFTTT. Get an FTTT. Sure. Just for that, too. Yeah. Redundancy. Why not? Yeah. You love There's the show no that much. <laughs> Do you guys ever not tweet something because you have, like, more than a certain amount of followers? Like, I, like... <laughs> Like, like I feel like me before. I, I feel like <laughs> if I had if I only had twenty <laughs> followers, like my Twitter stream would be like incredibly crazy. Like, but I but since I have so many, I'm like, eh, I bet that would bore like eighty percent of the people. Mm-hmm. Never I, I think I, I think I probably like format my tweets in a specific way depending on uh, who's following me or whatever. I mean, I'm I mostly like structure it differently for just whatever like, platform I'm posting. See so me, you write like, hey everyone, instead of hey ladies, like so you're like. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing that I usually say. I don't like, know. Hey, ladies. <laughs> Brant's like, signature catchphrase. <laughs> you hear in the distance, hey, ladies. Uh, you know, Brant's on his way over. Uh-huh. That's my ringtone. Yeah. Yep. Hey, ladies. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, to answer your question, no, I will shit post. I generally shit post <laughs> as, as much as like I would otherwise. Oh, I've seen your feed. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm being supportive, Bryce. I'm okay. saying Good. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're just saying you're, you're, you're a truth it, teller. It, yeah. Yeah. You told the truth. That's all he's saying. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. wait. I don't know. I haven't seen your Twitter recently. I don't okay. even know if I follow First you. First topic. I probably, <laughs> I probably yes. should. Do I follow you, Bryce? I should follow God, Bryce I hope right so. now. This would be Jesus. embarrassing. Well, well, I took that Twitter hiatus, and then I just haven't, like, done anything. You unfollowed everybody for it, too? <laughs> no, I, well, I don't think when I started that, were you around? Uh, uh, maybe. I don't know. What's oh, our first topic, Brent? I don't know. I'll do this later. Okay. Um, so first topic, I'm just going to go out with Modern Rogue. Where So last last month we decided that we were going to do Modern Rogue f- weekly. And mm-hmm. then we put out our first weekly episode. That's right. Uh, now we've been doing <laughs> weekly episodes for a while. What's up, John? <laughs> for some reason, I thought when you said the modern, I heard all the words, but in my brain, it was like we were doing Bizarre Briefing weekly. And I'm like, do I just don't what? remember this? Am what? I only invited on once a month? Like, I, I was like, what's happening? I don't, I, I don't know. Rare special that. guest, John yeah. Tilton. <laughs> a, yeah. Finally on an episode. Yes, again. Modern Rogue is weekly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's a tough schedule. It really is. I feel like we should have a group meeting some point to yeah. figure that out. And it was one of these weird things where we, for more than a year, we've talked about Modern Rogue is going to be a regular thing. Mm. And then, you know, we kind of dabbled with it at the end of last year. And then we were like, okay, now we're going to do it on the main channel. Yeah. And then, but we hadn't fully decided on a weekly thing. And then all of a sudden, like right before South by Southwest, Brian's like, hey, so anyway, we're doing a weekly. So it's going to be on Thursdays and get at it. And then yeah. it was like, it was just like this whole confluence of events where it was just I was so insanely busy I had to do taxes I had South by Southwest I had to do mm-hmm. Go Game stuff I had to do Skip School Remix I had to do Scam School I had to do Modern Rogue and it was just like oh I'm gonna die um, and yeah it's really tough because Sundays I work on Skim School Remix so Sunday afternoon Sunday evening mm-hmm. I work on that and then get it posted up on Monday Monday through Tuesday is usually like 
work on Scam School, maybe do an ad for Scam School, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday is all about publishing because that's all a it whole takes, thing. It takes a long time to just make sure you walk it through everything, make sure yeah, you've get got... all the metadata filled out, yeah. make sure all the different versions of Scam School are rendered out, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And then Thursday, some somewhere in there, I have to find time to do Modern Rogue. So right. I think what I have and to do... And at one point, at the very, at those very first episodes, they were being posted in the morning. Yeah, they were like a 10 a.m. Because um, at some point, that was like the initial expectation. And mm -hmm. just like... That's, that's extremely untenable. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then... There was definitely a day where... Scam school went up mostly on time, but then I looked at my stuff and realized, oh no, I don't have modern rogue footage. So I started downloading. Oh, that's right. You you ended up over here at like three a.m. one day. Yeah. So I was I was downloading it off of our server remotely, but that's really slow. It takes so long. It would have taken um, you all day. Yeah, and so I I I realized like so I could let this download overnight. Wake up in the morning and then start working on it. But I really hate doing that because I don't know how long an edit is going to take until I kind of get into it. And those downloads can fail. Yes, they can. And, um, and they've happened, I know to me regularly, we're just like, yeah. you know, you leave it overnight. It happens when it's overnight mm -hmm. too. And just at some point, 70% of the way through, it's decided it's going to fail. Yeah. And then I would have to be over here anyways. So I was just like, oh, I'm just going to drive over there. And I'm going to leech off the Wi-Fi, mm. and maybe if somebody's awake, then they will let me in. <laughs> um, oh, so you just were out in your car on the Wi-Fi? Over on the porch. That's awesome. Um, you didn't have it's, the, uh, uh, it's not the first time it's happened. This has happened like three or four times over the past year and a half, oh. two years. Whoa. Um, and it really sucks. It's like the worst. Yeah. Um, and, of course, all that stuff was before we had remote access to anything. Um, so that was a little bit different, but yeah. And then, and then Brian let me in and he was like, all right, be really quiet, download it and then go. And then I was like, okay. Did so, you tell him you were coming or did he just know, like have this understanding, I, like I, Brent's I, here, must be to I, download. I sent him a message on Slack, but, oh, okay. but he's got, he's got like nighttime notifications turned off. Oh, right. They like yeah. defaulted do not disturb times yeah. on everybody now. And, uh. Yeah, and so he didn't he didn't know until he saw me on the porch and he was oh my like, gosh. "What are you doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I sent you a message. I oh, gotta geez. get this footage because Modern Rogue is due tomorrow." Yeah. Um. And so I went back and I worked on it. I didn't sleep. That episode then, ended up coming out on Friday, on right? Friday, yeah, because yeah. it was. Which one was that? That the, was the. Was it the? That was the prank. The prank the, one. The, I the think. Worst yeah, the prank kid, one. Yeah, and then so it was. It was. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was like <laughs> six p.m. And I was like, it's getting really close. And I was like, everything was failing. I had a blue screen of death for the first time on my computer. Oh, jeez. Uh, Premiere was acting really weird. Um, and I could, uh, I'm i sure some of it was probably delirium. And then <laughs> Brian sent me a message. He was like, "Have you? did you sleep at all? And I was like, no. <laughs> but it's almost done. I can, mm. I've almost figured this out. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, just go to sleep and fix it in the morning. And so we did that. Well, I remember this because this was meanwhile, we were having issues with production, but wanting to get, because we had shot everything and everything was ready and you had mm -hmm. done all this work on the video and it was like, okay, we just want to get it out. But it's just kind of funny in general because I, I feel like I can never complain about anything because no matter how long I work, <laughs> I will never, ever reach like <laughs> the... Create like you guys must have like a time turner. So like I don't understand how you're able to like output this like extreme high quality of work. Uh, in so much of it too, and then like to add modern rogue on top of that, I'm just continually mm -hmm. impressed, and I feel like I could. I feel like I will just always be like. Well, and it probably like on on a seven day basis, it's probably not an un. It's not like not a crazy amount, mm -hmm. but I think the pacing is maybe wrong over the week, mm. right? Like if you're busting your ass all Wednesday night for a scam school and then right. you got Modern Rogue on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if it were something like Modern Rogue came out on a Saturday or something, yeah, that would just be a million times easier because it would be like, okay, I'm done with scam school. I've got two days to work on this, right? Mm. And not really much else is happening. Well, so. We usually shoot everything pretty up close to when it's going to come out too. So mm -hmm. that probably adds to the uh, 
Right. Yeah. Uh, kind of the tight scheduling. So maybe we should we should have some off air talks about probably. And I've this week I was a little bit better because I had a little bit of free time. So I I worked at like assembling the episode on Friday or Saturday or whatever for this upcoming week. Mm-hmm. Um. So I kind of I still need to get in there and chop stuff up. But like I've got I've got a roadmap for Success. scam school this week so that way i can get it done before wednesday yeah so that way i can get modern rogue done on time mm-hmm. um but right now i would need to basically do modern rogue a week ahead of schedule on my mm. my weekend which right. is friday friday saturday saturday yeah and the first half of sunday sort of so, um, so this is probably we're not even at ten episodes of Modern Rogue yet. No. Um, how do you f- like six? How do you feel as like uh, basically the person with the most hands on like the flow of that show? Uh, how how do you like? Are you do you feel confident about the way that show is coming out? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's definitely. It's definitely sort of working to find its groove. Yeah. Um, which we talked a little bit about last last month. Um, it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, the, the the most fun thing for me is is like feeling out like the assets and and being like, okay, what kind of what kind of music is appropriate for this? What kind of mm-hmm. what kind of uh, during during the the prank episode we had like these really great. Um, uh, interstitial like cutaway shots of yeah of the, the thing. individual chemicals yeah and and I really liked like working with the colors in that and the the sound design of that and the mm-hmm. the look and feel of that kind of stuff um, and I'm having a lot of fun with that sort of thing and also honestly is such a breath of fresh air from working on Scam School for three years where mm. every episode feels the same like it's all structured the same and. At some point, a lot of the tricks kind of run together, mm-hmm. and it's all kind of the same stuff. But the Modern Rogue feels feels fresh in a way that I'm really enjoying. Because yeah. um, there's not that that form. Because like uh, Scan School has been going on for so long that the format is down pat, which kind of mm-hmm. helps the efficiency of just like sure. it's gonna it's gonna look like this basically, mm-hmm. um, where uh, where you have at least freedom and flexibility to do different things with. The modern rogue. Yeah, and modern rogue also, since since the subjects of episodes can be so varied, mm-hmm. like it really limits how much how much sameness there is in each episode because mm-hmm. you can't have like how to how to crack a whip be exactly the same as tear gas gas mask right. things, right? Like it, and just, I think like the bull cra- the bull the bull whip cracking one definitely <laughs> bull crap bull crap the bull crap whipping <laughs> uh-huh. uh, uh felt the most like felt like it had its own kind of character with just some of the real subtle stuff like the use of like very specific music mm-hmm. um and some of the editing stuff i think oh man that, that intro like title shot <laughs> yeah. of of john maverick i i really had a lot of fun with that uh, yeah then whoosh, and then the 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 hawk in the background the, oh Gah! right <laughs> and then like the the big bold text and everything, mm. yeah, that was a lot of that was a lot of fun to put together. Um, yeah, I, I shooting. Oh, I just shooting realized was, that's why there was empty beer can or bottles in the warehouse. Was the shoot? Mm-hmm. Sorry, oh, sometimes sure. I, yeah. sometimes I find these empty because <laughs> like I'm the primary, the only one who works in there, mm-hmm. and so sometimes I fe- find beer bottles, and I'm like, I don't understand how this got here. Are there kids breaking in here having parties? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Um, how was okay? So I I had we were shooting the bull the bull whip episode, mm-hmm. and um, th- there was a thing like especially in the intro segment here, uh, uh, John is is cracking the whip basically the entire time he's talking. Mm-hmm. Like was that like a hurdle for that episode? Because I w- I re- I remember like coming away from that segment and thinking. Oh, that might be a weird editing thing hmm. of just the audio, you know, just constantly right. having the, the 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 whip. Yeah, no, I I didn't. It, it didn't really affect me too much. There was there was like, I think two times where it maybe affected the edit. Once early on, where I was trying to, I was I was cutting out some just some fat uh, discussion stuff, and then. Uh, yeah, like the the whipping kind of had like an unnatural like whoosh, whoosh, mm. uh, sort of thing, which yeah. didn't make sense. So I just kind of had to rework it a little bit. Mm. Um, 
and then yeah, there was just there was one time where he was uh, where Brian's holding out the the spaghetti, mm. uh, and he whips it, and I did a little bit of tightening there because mm. um, there was there was like he whipped right next to it and didn't hit it, and then he, yeah, he whipped he it took again and got yeah. it because um, mm. he wanted to get so close and. I mean, that's just the kind of thing that would happen on Scam School or anything. Um, but yeah, it, it really only affected one time as far as like speech patterns and stuff. Mm. Uh, but luckily, I think the 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 pacing, the rhythm of the whipping was was far enough apart that it wasn't like that big of a deal. Okay. Yeah, because like that that shoot was definitely one of the. Uh, from an audio perspective, just like I wasn't, no, nobody was able to monitor audio right. during the shoot. And so I was just hoping that like the crack sound came out in, you know, in between the microphones, mm -hmm. but also like wasn't blowing everything out. Sure. Um, but like we were I, listening back to it the day of, it sounded fine. Yeah. I, so, I think it came out pretty good. Yeah. There's a good balance. Um, and I, I think, uh, we are looking to maybe shoot some more modern rogues this week. Correct. We don't know what they are. Right. No um, idea what they are. We've got, we've got one more and that'll come out this upcoming week, this, this mm. week, the current week. Yeah. Um, the week of March 28th. Yes. To be specific. Uh, and, and that'll be, that'll be a camera taser episode, which should be good. Um, it should be like they yeah. the guys had some really great reactions and I think the, sure. the 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 instructional part of it is pretty straightforward. It just it kind of takes a minute because you're dealing with like plastics. Yeah, and it's like a build heavy episode. Yeah, um, kind uh -huh. of in the same way that the the first half of the gas mask was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the the reactions are really good. Uh, like Brian mm -hmm. Brian and Jason uh, uh, were were tweeting out and Instagramming a lot out that day. Of doing it, so um, hopefully there's a little bit of buzz. For oh, it. oh man, uh, yeah, no, that should be good. Uh, I think I think Jason still has that mark on his arm. Oh, really? He definitely did the last time I saw him. Mm. It was pretty bad. Yeah, brutal, <laughs> brutal indeed. Yeah, be safe, kids. That's what you get when you work with us. Just get oh, scars for the rest of your life. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not let's not put that in the promo video <laughs> Sorry. For, for our recruitment video. <laughs> Sorry, I have Matt. a few scars, but none from the job. Mm. I've probably got like. I wonder. Some weird... I I think this might be a scar that I'll have from the job. I cut myself with it. I can talk about it during the worst date kids. Oh. Yeah, I got a tetanus shot for it too. Wow. <laughs> wow. We'll talk about it later. It's funny. Okay. I went to the doctor sometime after you got that tetanus shot, and they asked me if I wanted one because I hadn't had one in a while. Oh, did you like, say yes? John just got one. So you don't gonna need one? one. Okay. No, I'm going <laughs> to get like, no, like, that's not so how tetanus works at all. <laughs> that, uh, I'll just borrow some of John's blood. Yeah, I'm going to get some of John's <laughs> antibodies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, smart. Did yeah. they tell you it works for 10 years? Uh, I found out. I don't think they, nobody really told me. The one thing they definitely understated was how much it hurt and how much it would screw up my arm <laughs> for like a week. It's only yeah. just now come back from it. Well, and then we went to, um, we'll talk about this maybe later too. We, we all saw... 10 Cloverfield Lane together and mm. um, that movie's like really tense and I had gotten the tetanus shot that day and so like I'm like this like for a majority of the movie and it just makes all that blood like pumping like where yeah. you got the shot and I was like so like like it like almost gave an extra experience to the movie because I felt like physical pain. You felt her pain. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was awesome. But mm -hmm. Uh, all right, what's what's our next topic, Brand? What do you want to talk about next? Uh, let's go into extended outtakes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sure. Bless you. So, uh, I, I have allergies, and so if I'm if if you hear funny noises mm. from me, or if I just have a there's cough a cough button incident like that. There's a cough button. Yeah, the blue little box. Well, there. the thing. Oh, this right here. Yeah. yeah. You, you now it's working though. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, I did not know I would have to. That was cool. like legitimately surprising. Sneak me. attack. Yeah. If I know though, I will. I will use yeah. that. Um, outtakes. Yeah, extended outtakes. We've been doing a lot of those. Pretty much, more or less, one for every video. Kind this of entire show. Is an extended uh, outtake. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, people seem to like them. They're good. They're funny, and I like. It, it's good when they can be like at least a couple minutes long. I think yeah. the times when I have had an episode that I didn't turn into an outtake was because it was usually less than a minute. 
Mm. Like it was too much f- to fit all in the CTA at the end. Right. But it wasn't long enough to make a whole video, I felt like. Yeah. I, I, but I definitely have some in the chamber. I, I definitely tried to uh, undersell the CTA outtakes these days. Like I look, mm-hmm. for, I, I look for like, what's a good like five second outtake that. Really? Yeah. I, yeah. I try to cut it about as short as possible. Five to ten seconds. Um, and it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to put my best material in that one. Uh, I want to be like, uh, this is, this is, this is all right. Well, I definitely think about it thematically. Stuff. I think about it thematically. Cause I, mm-hmm. I, I need to make one for that bottle episode that went up last week. Yeah. Uh, the, the, um, the bottle swap master. Sure. Um, because oh, there is like five minutes yeah. of just like, Hey, like on the episode we broke one bottle, but sneak attack, we actually broke like three. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of them were really funny, but I didn't want to put any of those in the CTA because to do all of them would be too long. Sure. And then, so it's, it's a, it is a weird thing. Cause I don't, I, I would like to not think like, Oh, I'm going to make, I'm going to give this the bad outtakes, mm-hmm. but I'd like to give it the ones that can stand on their own. That th- there's probably enough footage in that episode too. That was kind of funny, just discussion that was happening as well. And it was just like, there's so much footage cause it took so long to do that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could do like, call it extended outtakes but also just have kind of funny stuff going on too i'm sure but yeah i mean the the outtakes aren't necessarily just like bloopers or whatever but it's Mm -hmm. kind of just stuff that was cut yeah Yeah, i actually Um, have not seen this but i feel like i know exactly what it is because i just witnessed so many of uh (laughs) the you know behind the scene of the shoot right Mm -mm. that i know brian uh there certainly is probably a lot to choose from each uh Mm -hmm. in, in a good way though yeah. Yeah. And it definitely helps on like the longer episodes. For yeah. sure. Like um, uh the the one from a couple weeks ago with Dan Benjamin, the bottle fire starter. Mm-hmm. Definitely not like barely right. any. So sure, sure, sure. But that was a shorter episode and you know it, you know, it happens. Yeah, like the this week's Modern Rogue is probably not gonna have it. Um Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um but yeah, the the CTA ones I, I like to I like to have just long enough for the card to be able to be up for the full time, mm-hmm. and then like kind of cut it about as short as possible, just because I don't want to like add a bunch of time to the episode, mm-hmm. uh, that kind of stuff. And then yeah, the outtakes are fun because you just kind of as you're editing, you know, you're cutting out stuff constantly, and so if you see something that you think there's there's a little bit of use in this, there's a little bit of like this is this is a good moment, but it just doesn't fit in the episode. Yeah, just put uh, it aside. Yeah, you put it in a separate timeline for outtakes. And the thing I've I learned with the the, the modern rogue prank episode because that's a long extended outtake. That's yeah. that's like seven eight minutes, um, and that's even cut down from what it was. It was like ten minutes. Yeah, and he, I I I uploaded it, and then I I waited for like four days because. It's kind of out of order. It, right? Yeah, I it's, realize it's, that. It's, it's it's sort of chronological for about two thirds of it. Because my it's my guess is that it, you put it together based on how you were editing, mm-hmm. and then you just lose the order. Yeah, you know, um, with all of that. And and there is a little bit of restructuring with. Uh, I I have a very specific style that I want to go for for the opening shot and the closing shot because mm-hmm. uh, those have a very specific pacing to the format. But everything else is just kind of whatever. And I was going to go back and edit it to make it a little bit more chronological. But part of me kind of likes just that it bounces back and forth and mm-hmm. that you don't necessarily know exactly what's gonna where it's going to go next. Mm-hmm. And I, I also just realized at some point, I'm not going to go back and edit this. I'm just going <laughs> to post it. It'll be fine, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then people really liked it. So now I am just not going to worry too much about the... The thing as as long yeah. as as long as it's not super weird or something. I don't think but. people go into an extended outtake titled video expecting like some masterful like, like continuity edit to it. Yeah. They're looking yeah. for yeah, they're just looking for the enjoyment of you know the best bits. Yeah, and it helps to have good editing on it. Which again, I had, I did I actually did not know this existed. Now I'm super excited. <laughs> so it's like oh, right, again, there's you, so yeah. much stuff. I I yeah. just don't understand how you guys do it. I, I can't even watch it all. It's like I don't even understand. It blows or my maybe mind he every want day. To. But 
It's a good no. skill to have. No, it. I know. I will <laughs> definitely watch these. I am. Uh, I'm super excited. Sweet. I, I was thinking about it the other day, and I thought, man, like this. When I was, uh, I, I'll, I'll save it for deadlines. Okay. Um, <laughs> we also last last month we talked about South by Southwest and the live night attack. If you don't know, Brian mm. is uh, one half of a comedy podcast duo uh, called Night Attack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's only one half of a comedy podcast. <laughs> yeah. A, if you, if you didn't know, no, well, no, it's funny because uh, if you didn't know about Night Attack, it just sounds like he just doesn't have a very funny, like, this your way of describing, like, his not very funny comedy show. <laughs> no. It's like half of comedy. It's not that it's not it's funny. <laughs> it's just that it, it, he's one, yeah, he's one in two people who do yeah. it. Yes. I don't want to, I don't want to sell Justin short because Justin is also a big part of it. Uh, but yeah, so, so they, the guys did. You could call it his, it's, he's, a hundred percent of a two hundred percent comedy podcast. Hmm. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know that that makes sense Keep at going all. What okay. you're saying. Uh-huh. So <laughs> the guys put on a sh- uh, comedy show uh, during South by Southwest, which just happened this month, the Austin Night Attack Live 2016, hmm. uh, and uh, we 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 uh, uh, hold up in a in a in a bar on Sixth Street, the hmm. Brick Strange. Uh, the episode's already up, and uh, it was great. Brant helped with uh, filming. Yep. Uh, and like super Cameron solid, movies. like the yeah. whole, the whole way. Appreciate um, it. Yeah. I was, I was pretty blown away because, um, I've been to a lot of, you know, night attacker and SFW live things mm-hmm. and they always go pretty well. Like when you have the energy of the crowd, it really helps, mm-hmm. um, you know, add this additional layer to the, you know, what's going on and, and yeah. there's the ability to do stuff that you can't do on the normal show. And so mm-hmm. it's cool. It's always cool that way. And it was definitely but, one where like the audience energy directly fed into the show. Yeah. Right. But this, when I got there, I was so worried about it because it like, it wasn't like a dragon con live thing mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. the setup is a lot different. The feel is a lot different. It, like I would almost put this one in a different category of like live show yeah, and Dragon I Con's knew it, a little bit there's like a little bit more separation right yeah, yeah and it's a, and everyone there is there for the show right yeah. and then when we first showed and it's up and it's so much more bigger those panels are always a yeah. lot bigger than what this show was so when we first showed up I was like I feel like this will be good but I was like worried for how it would go I think everyone might have been a little bit because it was just I was so, definitely it worried. was so different from yeah. whatever but then like it it didn't take very long as soon as like kind of the first thing had gotten started. I forget what was every segment I thought worked really well. Um, and then all that worry, it just kind of like went away. I'm like, Oh man, this is actually like super fun. And <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought it went, I thought it went really well. I, I had two big worries going into that day. Mm-hmm. Um, one, um, the, the bar we went, we were at was great and they were fantastic and they were super, um, you know, flexible with us. Um, but I was a little worried because they wanted us to sign some paperwork and it was just getting closer and closer to the day and, and it just, we didn't have it. Um, but also we weren't exchanging any money. So like it wasn't, it it wasn't too big of a deal, but I just like, there was a point early on where I was like, I still haven't gotten those papers and I haven't heard back from this dude. I hope that he hasn't Googled us and decided, nah, (laughs) at some point. But then he texted me as like, I just wanted to let you know that we're still on. So like I, I, I was worried I was a little worried about that, um, but also the day of, he he was like, "Well, so so about how many people do you think it, it's going to be? We, we're going to be staffed up." And I I when I told him it would it would be about fifty, and I was just I was a little worried that that might be too high. I I, I didn't want to oversell it, mm-hmm. but I think if I undersold it and he was like overstaffed, yeah, it would also be a problem. So right. and, and but by the end of the day, like I, that's a I I think we probably had like 50 or 60 there was people. at least 50 it people about, right yeah it, it might have even been closer it, it was at least 50 for sure there was a surprising number of people who um were just there because they were just drinking during the day walking by hearing music yeah there were a lot yeah, of people who were standing out on the sidewalk and taking was, photos of the possum i think mm-hmm. they did it in a way where it was very um if you had never seen anything about night attack if you did not know who brian and justin were i think mm-hmm. the Stuff they chose to do yeah. was very, and um, I don't want to say anyone friendly because that implies that like yeah. seven year old would be like, yeah, not attack, <laughs> but uh, so uh not your facial. Yeah, <laughs> but um, that okay, but so that was my I, other I think worry. anyone who is oh, at a bar, yeah. apart for anyone who would be at that bar, 
just you know drinking at that time on mm. whatever day of the week it was at, what was it a Saturday yeah but um maybe I think it, I think I think there was definitely an element to it that was like it wasn't all inside jokes uh, certainly not off the top um, but but my big worry was the thirty seconds or DIF sort of the challenge bit that they did at the end oh, I thought that was like one of the best. Well, and it, and it came out, like, because it was all random draw. And so it kind of came out in, like, the perfect progression. But there was some stuff on in those cups that I was very worried would get us kicked out. What, what, what were some of the ones? It, who uh, made it, those, by the way? Uh, so most of those were submitted from Night, night Attack fans. They, that makes sense. We had a big doc that, that they filled out. Um, so was there any filtration? Yeah, so I, okay. I, I went through, and uh, I think it was like about 30 each of the uh, regular challenges and then the like punishment challenges. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, there was still some stuff that were... The, the big stuff that worried me was like fire stuff, stuff that dealt with lighting like mm-hmm. their armpit hair on fire or... or <laughs> Um, the other the other yeah, stuff was um, uh, Ruinum. There was a bit or two about ch- you had to chug Ruinum, mm-hmm. and I, I just because we deal with bars a lot, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm cautious about ABC laws and like, oh, you brought wine in, what the fuck? I'm gonna right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it ended up being they picked like the <laughs> I won't say the tamest stuff because the sriracha facial was certainly an experience, but uh, they it, it was it. It was great. I think it ended up being probably the best way it could have come out uh, with just their pools. Yeah. Uh, and the Pasta Bossy was great. Uh, they they had a great time. They played a lot of music. Uh, I think they were able to make it to their show later that day. And uh, it, it, it was great seeing all, all the Chat Realm fans in in the flesh. And, and I think I think it was a good day. Yeah. My, my one big concern going into that was... I mean, luckily, I didn't. I had basically minimal responsibility, which was yeah. nice. Um, but my my one big concern was parking. But it ended up being amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found parking like two blocks away for five bucks. Oh, for sweet the, for the evening or something, sweet. right? I yeah. found parking two par- two bucks away. That was like thirty dollars. Wow! <laughs> but I needed to be real yeah. close. I had yeah, all the equipment. Yeah, and stuff, yeah, sure. so. uh, but like years passed when we shot at the handlebar, or whatever. I remember yeah. driving around for thirty minutes trying to find any parking and then when i did it was at least 30 bucks yeah huh interesting yeah because i know all the times i was at the south by southwest stuff i was surprised about finding parking uh, to one point where i got too greedy about where to park because i was like if this is open i'm sure (laughs) something closer but uh it ended up only being like a 10 minute walk well also in the past the those shows were on uh east 6th street yeah, on the so east side where it was a downtown. lot busier. Yeah. yeah, where this this one was a little more centrally located, a little a little away a little ways away rather from some of the the day drinking crowds. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah, it, it ended up being great. Yeah. Uh, so that episode's already up. Uh, if you go to nightattack.tv, they've already done another episode since. But um, I think it came out really well. Thank you, Brant. Mm. Uh, thanks to Roberto and Demon Five, uh, the Possum Posse. Uh, everyone yeah and not only are we getting uh, compliments in chat but we also got compliments on production uh, like email yeah. compliments and stuff like that, that was, a that lot was of a, tweets came into really the nice. to the show twitter too yeah uh, there's even one right in the chat right now there is yeah absolutely thank you stacy 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 was the one i believe who had the the moist um washcloth right right, right, to, right. to clean off brian's yeah. sriracha face oh perfect well then which i feel you, like Stacey. which i feel like <laughs> maybe violated the whole 30 seconds bit but i'm not going to get into that south yeah. by southwest south by southwest it was a thing yeah. next w- uh, what would you like to talk about we can go chronologically or maybe uh, we can do inverted pyramid. i feel like this is a good like late middle Okay. Kind of segment. I just kind of want to get it out there because um, we sort of had a similar thing last month and we just kind of didn't really talk about it. I didn't want to let it skate by okay. this month. Okay. We're talking about it all. Oh. Uh, and th- this this feels like something I would, I would be fine if, John, this seems like the kind of thing you would recuse yourself from. Uh, and Bryce, I don't know how comfortable you're talking about it. Okay. Uh, we had a bit of a controversial behind the scam episode. I'm not going to get like super into details, but I do, I do want to, I can talk co- about it briefly. I want to cover some of it. Okay. Um, so 
behind the scam went on hiatus for a while, right? Yeah. Uh, for About a month or so. A few months. Uh, and then and then we came back and it was a mixed reception for some of the episodes. Right. But more or less, like, whatever. And the show format didn't change. Right. It's, it's the still exact the exact same, same show. Yeah. And uh, so, we, so we had an episode, what, like last week? This past week? Yes. And it was the snap pennies in half. People are all up in arms about it. Uh, so uh, break it down to the most fundamental level. Sure. Behind the scam, do, I think we could all agree, is mm. a core piece of identity to the brand of Scam School, right? Certainly to Scam stuff. Right. Um, uh, but it, and I, it, it's, I mean, I, it's, it's a long, it's, it's a pillar of the Scam School channel. Yes. It's, this, it's a the, long the running. The broader Scam School brand. Sure. Yeah. And I feel like, so if, 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 if hear me out here. <laughs> so I've, I've seen some comments about like, well, you, you make money from ads. You don't need this. And it's like, dog. All right. We are, <laughs> we are owned okay. by, we are owned by test tube. Half of our content isn't ad supported. Right. Uh, we don't actually see all of that ad money. Also, YouTube ad space is pretty volatile because not all views are monetizable views. Right. Right. So you see like you see broad numbers and you can sort of get like a range of they earn either not a whole hell of a lot or a lot. Sure. Uh, and so we see like a portion of that after test tube takes their cuts because there are people on the back end over there who I, like, I don't even know about, but they got to get paid. I mean, functionally, we yeah. get uh, uh, you could say we virtually get none of that. Yeah. Basically. And then we've got what four at least four people to support and then mm -hmm. you know we have to pay people who help us like roberto and whoever mm -hmm. else is helping us and like ad ad money from youtube is not enough sponsorship sure. is not enough for all of us to keep our jobs right strictly speaking like that model <laughs> does not work not for us for all of us right at least not right now and that's why back in the day before we had behind the scam, before scam stuff was a thing, Brian toured. He toured all the time. Every week he was out on the road. He was doing shows because that's how he had to make that extra income to support the operation. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, like, I guess you could turn off behind the scam. You could turn off scam stuff. We could yeah. <laughs> fire half of us and Brian could go back on the road and everything's still fine. Right, and then content is cut in half. Maybe it's a third of what it was. Uh, yeah. yeah, it would go back to being Scam School and Scam School Remix, probably. Yeah. So I feel like in order for Scam stuff to thrive, like the emails help, the behind the scam helps. It gets eyes on new stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. It's like a really important part of keeping us afloat. Yeah. Like the whole operation kind of runs off of some of that stuff. So, sure. That said. I feel like behind the scam, whatever form it takes, is necessary. Okay. Right. Sure. Well, the, the funny thing is, usually there's, sometimes there's some, you know, commenters. In, in fact, probably every BTS, there's probably some people who are like, blah, it's just a sales pitch or whatever. Right. right. But um, this one kind of stood out more, I think, because because it picked up a lot more. It, either something happened where a lot more people viewed it. Well, yeah, so the past two weeks, they've done exceptionally well numbers, mm -hmm. better than Scam School numbers, which is generally not the case for Behind the Scam. It's very sure. strange. It's um, very strange. And, and whether it's a... Illuminati. Uh, or rather the past three weeks, um, however you want to look at it, uh, uh, partly because either the content is just some... Keyword like the Rubik's like cube. Rubik's cube. You get a lot of Rubik's cube. A lot of a lot of Rubik's cube people. Which uh, I didn't. I, I just I didn't even it. realize it was a community. But like okay. they are a thriving community of people who love Rubik's cubes. Um, or the snap pennies in half, which I think probably there's a metadata element where, um, it's it's not marked as behind the scam on the thumbnail anymore mm -hmm. because I, I, I'm still a little unsure of where to. Although do with that. we are putting those in the behind the scam playlist these days. Okay. Yeah, uh, but but people don't see that in their subscription sure, feed, sure, sure. Uh, and so you see snap pennies in, in half like a badass, mm -hmm. and then you think, oh, I'm gonna learn how to so so, uh, you, and you multiply that by getting you know uh, however many more viewers than it normally would. Mm -hmm. um, it it's tough, but like what like with the ads, we've been doing domain ads for a long time. Mm -hmm. We've always tried to make them entertaining, sure. uh, or give something back to the people, which is why the behind the scams generally have a giveaway attached, mm -hmm. so that. Uh, 
on some level you can you can get something out of it even if you are not into being sold something right now. Sure. Um, and, yeah, I think and, this episode. Sorry, I actually had an sure. idea of part of solution, but I won't talk about it now. Okay. Uh, okay. But uh, I had to write it down, so I wasn't listening. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, and now I'm losing my train of thought. So I'm just like derailing. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> but, uh, just keep going. Uh, oh no, I know what I was gonna say. Uh, this one was a much shorter episode too. Very short. So I feel like um, you get more people it, who are interested and will click it because it's shorter. That too. But then also on top of that, I think that might be where some of the disconnect comes because a lot of those things which are are essentially a sales pitch, but there might be more like jokes leading up to it or some mm-hmm. extra content in there that kind of beefs up what you're getting. So you like I think this one is more like, oh, here's the cool thing in out and then it's done. And and when I first saw the episode, I thought it was great because it wasn't wasting mm-hmm. time. It was like really straightforward to the point and respectful of someone's time who's just kind of checking in. But I think maybe some of what we learned there was was uh, maybe people are, are enjoying the b- video more if it's actually, it, it kind of will sound counterintuitive, but it's almost like goes into the pitch more and has more layers to it. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think mm-hmm. this week was very straightforward. And I think um, it's the type of thing uh, where people, you know, there might be something else that they're not liking that they're not really knowing. And so they then, when they're typing a comment, they talk about how it's a sales pitch. So right. really every single Friday is a sales pitch, but maybe if they saw two other ones in the past couple months, mm-hmm. those ones that they saw, they were laughing at a joke that you know we didn't take the time in, to put in this one. Because I remember sure. when we were shooting everything too, it, we were kind of struggling to This one was a kind of a, a weird one to write. Yeah, and so mm-hmm. I, I wasn't particularly surprised at you know, some of the backlash in there, but it, it was surprising cause I didn't, I didn't think the episode, at least from our perspective was any worse. In fact, I thought it was very good, yeah. but I think it was missing something that maybe we didn't know that people were enjoying so much hmm. that might help, um, you know, take some of that yeah. ickiness that a lot of people do feel when you, you know, you watch something on a channel that you used to, you know, all our other videos aren't pitching a sales item. So even Mm -hmm. though we have one that does it every week, um, if you're just used to it or expecting that and not everyone watches every single video on the channel. Well, and that that comes through as a surprise through the comments a lot, which is probably the main one that Brian has been responding to is that people are like behind the scam as it is now has been happening for a while. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if you were watching the channel, like if you were an i if you were a super fan and watched every episode when they went up, you would clearly know what yeah. that video. Yeah. Well, that's why I hesitate to immediately but, think, uh-huh. oh, we should just be defending the fact that we're doing a sales pitch at you know as an episode every week because there is that there's ones that are just like that but get a great response and so I do th- I think there's something subtle mm-hmm. that we might be missing that is either helping people muscle through that. Like, it's almost like, um, uh, not to get into Batman v Superman, oh, geez. but, uh, but I think a lot of things in that movie, um, don't work for people. And then that makes mm-hmm. other things stand out that normally in another Batman movie also happens, but no one would care about gotcha. because, gotcha. because something else isn't happening. And so everyone says, Oh, I really hate this about it when it's true about every single Batman movie, mm. but because something else didn't work, you're seeing it. It's, it stands out to you because you're looking for something. Uh, well, and also, to stick it on, but. I, I wonder if the time of day when this stuff is posting is, is, is showing up to different, because like Scam School comes out on Wednesday evenings, uh, well after, you know, five o'clock when, when people would be off work. Mm. But Scam School Remix comes out in the morning on Mondays. Um, uh, behind the scam is on Fridays, sometimes in the afternoon. So while people might still be at work, so like I, 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 I it wouldn't surprise me if someone saw a behind the scam pop up in their feed because that was the time that they checked YouTube, and not when the other times of the week when these other videos come up, and maybe they just inherently don't. They they just missed it because mm. like if you subscribe to so many people or whatever. 
Yeah, and that's 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 a hard thing for me to wrap my mind around because I'm I you know I subscribe to fifty people and I watch every video that all of them post or whatever, sure. right? Like that's that's how I consume things. I do a lot of things through YouTube, mm-hmm. and that's just that's my things. And so for me, it's it's always a a, we, a strange argument for oh we have to post at this specific time because we'll hit these demos. Whereas I go, I don't care when it's posted. If you if you release the video, I will see it, and mm-hmm. that's just that's how I consume things, uh, which is actually one of my favorite parts about extended outtakes because I've just taken to posting those kind of whenever. Mm-hmm. So I posted one like two days ago at like two in the morning or whatever, mm-hmm. and it's performing pretty well. But you know, you probably are hitting different people at different times yeah. or whatever. Because I I think i I have the opposite YouTube experience where I follow kind of a lot of people, and mm. a lot of them I don't watch every video. a lot of them I don't watch most videos that they post mm. um and so, like every day, I'll just have a list of videos to kind of decide what I want to see and uh, I don't have any particular order of, uh, or particular like preference of like what that order is or how early something is, mm. but I'm sure there's some sort of randomness of like it being in a specific spot or being next to another video that influences whether I'm going to watch it um, or, or just w- even what type of video it is. Like right. there are channels where I, I know what they post and I'm just not going to watch that kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. it, it's, it, it's tough because you have to deal with both types of uses of, right. of YouTube. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there are definitely channels like uh, uh, Man Made, which I subscribe to, and I strictly only subscribe to it to watch Speakeasy, which is... Uh, 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 Formerly Paul, uh, Paul F. Tompkins' show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I didn't watch any of the other videos that they would post because I knew that th- those videos I, I just don't care about, mm-hmm. so I'm not going to watch those, which is interesting because I would imagine people would do that with Behind the Scam, where if they're like, I, I don't I don't care about what's on Scam stuff, I'm just not going to watch that episode. Right. But instead, they do watch the episode and they're like, oh, I'm furious. And mm-hmm. so I have to imagine that reading through those comments, and you, you mentioned this earlier, but like you can tell that they're not the core audience, right? right. Th- these are kind of outliers who either sort of subscribe and sort of watch or mm-hmm. they're people who just kind of stumbled onto it or they're whatever. But yeah. you can tell that they're not people who know that every On Friday e- every Friday is right. behind the scam. And this is literally what we've been doing for years. Somebody was like, you just lost a long time scam school subscriber. And I was like, where was your outrage three years ago when we started doing this? Because the format hasn't really changed much. Yeah. Um, or also just continue not watching it. Yeah, I suppose. And and also there's there's a certain element of that outrage that I just strictly do not understand. Uh, <laughs> Some but of, anyway, <laughs> I feel like I feel like we're this. I feel like our, our power level has gotten a little too high on this. Maybe. All right. Well, I'm just saying, like as as a person, if yeah. there's something that I watch that I don't like, I just stop watching it. Sure. I don't. I don't. I. I honestly just don't understand somebody who goes to the comments <laughs> to to argue about something sure. that. If you don't like it, what are you doing? Yeah, though I do think it is maybe worth taking a look at just the way we do some of that stuff. And sure, if, and I, because there is a certain amount of good goodwill that is genuinely being lost. I bet in probably in people and being. I would I would love it if people could be more helpful with their critique. Sure, right? Instead of just saying this this is dumb, I'm unsubscribing. Okay, Th- that doesn't yeah. tell well, us what's actually wrong. Okay. Well, I think I think it's because not. A, I think it's. You have to kind of dig deep for that stuff too, and I don't think any not everyone might know right away. Kind of what I was saying earlier, people might think it's because it's a sales pitch, not realizing that they enjoyed the other sales pitches, mm. and they didn't think that it was a sales pitch because they were enjoying it so much, right? So that, but then it it kind of you end up. And I know I do stuff like this too with things that I don't like. Like I'll pin it on something and then later realize, well, maybe I actually didn't like it because of this reason, hmm. and this doesn't bother me. So I, I, I think I yeah. think that's why it's hard to get good feedback. Like um, it's hard to send you know it's hard to send a survey out to people and ask them why they don't they like or don't like something because a right. lot of the times they're not even gonna know. Um, I just want people to think more about their reactions. Like critically analyze how they feel about things, hmm. because if if you ever sure. want to change, right, that's how you accomplish it. If you say I have a problem with this because of these reasons, mm. then like we can work on that. That's something. That's something we can do something. Well, with. we should do. We should actually go through 
and take the data from so put what what take the like ratio mm-hmm. for every behind the scam and then look like at look at the percentage of each behind the scam episode and see how much time was spent doing giveaways how much time was spent doing like sales pitch like straight up sales pitch how much mm-hmm. was like kind of fluff like fun you know jokey brian talking to the audience sure or in like whatever categories we do so put all that data in right mm-hmm. and then you just look at that like ratio and then we algorithmically then see, generate yeah. new episodes well, yeah <laughs> so we don't need we you just guys spit anymore. it into the machine <laughs> and but, it spits out perfect episodes. But, but that actually would give you funnily enough that would probably give you more insight than someone just guessing why they didn't like it because probably but also there are like there so are many variables like, yeah i think the yeah, problem well, with that is why, there's so many things just between metadata Title, timing and thumbnails and content just is the product if someone does, doesn't like the product yeah like I, I, yeah, I, I think there are definitely ways to look at some of that stuff. And there's uh, also an yeah. element of like people winning, but we can't go eagle eye. something. Well, we can put all that. So we can actually put in all the information too with with um, how much the product sold as well. So you could go um, in every one and you could say, oh well, here uh, the amount of likes and views matched translated to these kind what, of numbers. Yeah, but here it didn't, and so. You know, is that something that sounds like a fun project for you to work on? Yeah, well, I actually (laughs) maybe I I might actually. I'm not a mathematician. (laughs) No, I might actually do do something like that because it's um, you know, it's the type of thing where it's. I think it's best for the audience and for us because a we want to you know, like Brant was saying earlier, um, you know, scam stuff has become a big part of you know how we run everything and and you know, make it so it's possible to do as much content as we do versus, you know, Brian being on the road and doing the stage show and, you know, mm-hmm. one one YouTube video yeah. a week versus right. how much we're doing now plus all the other podcasts. Um, and then on top of that, you know, also we want to be providing good content and making something that's entertaining for people to watch. So, um yeah. And uh, anyway, just one quick little button. Okay, I, I just appreciate everybody who is like going in and saying like, I I don't understand. This is great. Like, love what you're doing. Uh, and even people who are taking the time out to say, you know, I didn't like this, but like, here's why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, solved. <laughs> Problem solved. Uh, solved. On a light- now available at oh, scams.com. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on a lighter note. That was great. On a lighter note, um, uh-huh. last week, uh, the three of us came together in this very room. Yeah. This very studio. Right here. Right here. In these seats. Uh, to record the scam school that's going to go up this week on mm-hmm. YouTube. Um, uh, we, we, we've talked about it on the show before. Long story short, we went out and did a shoot, and unfortunately, the audio card got <laughs> formatted before it could be ingested. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Brant, Brant came up with the idea to sort of save at least one of these three episodes we shot by totally doing a, a redub mm-hmm. of the episode. Speaking of episodes that potentially people could hate for some reason. Right, exactly. <laughs> Although this is the type of thing but where this is I'm just like, content if people thing. hate it, I'll yeah. like be more <laughs> excited about it. It's like the, you know. Uh, so, we, so we shot, we recorded that last week. Was mm-hmm. it last Monday, I think? Yep. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, I, 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 walked, I walked out of that session feeling really good. And I actually, I watched it and I, 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 I like what, you came up with Mm -hmm. uh i think there were a lot of surprising moments of like synchronicity between there is some uncanny valley moments like a lot where you go is that his mouth mouth is perfect his mouth is doing it right (laughs) yeah um which i think it just goes to show how maybe it makes the ones that are perfect just shine all the more (laughs) because there's a couple in there at least from the cut that i saw earlier that are just like so spot on hilarious Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, and there, I think it turned out great. There's also a little bit of editorializing of like, mm-hmm. oh, I know Jason said three words here, but it didn't really contribute to things and just kind of muddies up the sound. So I'm yeah. just not going to say anything, mm-hmm. uh, which is a little weird to see his mouth move, but nothing's happening. But yeah, th- there are a lot of cool moments in there. Um, so I have, I don't know, I, I, I've had this thing and it's not as it's not as pronounced as before, but I generally don't like hearing myself played back. Mm. Just... 
not a fan. I, I, anyway, I've, I've heard most that's a common people problem. Aren't, most yeah. people aren't a fan of you. Um, but but I watched that episode, and I don't know if it's it's a fun, a factor of just me being on these on podcasts more often, or just doing streams more often, or something, or just hearing myself uh, a little more regularly. Uh, but like, I felt I felt really good about like my performance for for that mm. dub. And yeah. I, I wanted to know if you guys kind of felt similarly, if you if you liked what you did, yeah. or if you thought you did a bad job and no one should watch it. I, I, I feel like I feel like everybody <laughs> did did a pretty good job. I feel like I I I had some moments that were really good, and then moments that just didn't feel very Jason like, and in a way that I I wish I had done better. Mm. But it it was such a such a weird process just to get all of these together. Yeah. Uh, it would. It probably would have been a better product if I had done everybody's lines individually, mm. and then just said, "Okay, here's the thing. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Do takes. Do a bunch of takes, and then I sync it all up." But that would. That I think would, it would have been. It would have been more accurate, but I don't think it would have been as funny. Probably if right. we did it that yeah. way, because there is a little bit of a live to tape kind of feel. Yeah, mm-hmm. as it currently is, and just the energy is better. Like. It, mm-hmm. it, I, I don't know. We, you could kind of feel that we were also in the same room doing it together that a way that sometimes doing separate recordings doesn't always gel. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I think it came out really good. Uh, I hope people are looking forward to it slash have enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever it's, they listen uh, to this. It's definitely, it's definitely the, the weirdest Scam School episode mm-hmm. ever. It's the most high concept kind of strange We've never done anything like this before, and I think I think I think it'll be a fun one-off, and I think some people will be upset about it, and I think some people will will be like, "Oh, this was kind of a, a funny, weird thing." Uh, uh, so Brian, it, Brian loves really, it. Yeah, we we were, were watching it uh, during that last behind the shoot, behind the scam shoot, and he was just laughing his ass off. He really enjoyed it. Good. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. Yeah. To see how that all plays out. And hopefully hopefully the ad that we just shot right before this episode will kind of help tie it together. Kind of in the same way that there was the episode where Jaime figured out the the solution to the puzzle almost immediately. So it was like a three-minute episode. Yeah. Uh, people on Vessel kind of had a problem with that because they thought, oh, where's the actual solution? I don't understand. Mm. So we shot the ad to kind of... Make, give make fun of that, but also give more information mm. and kind of just be informed by those. So the the way that people responded to this on Vessel, I feel like maybe we've <laughs> subverted a little bit of that with, with this. See, ad. those five people on Vessel really that give that feedback, it can be helpful. It can be. Maybe. As, assuming we check the vessel comments, <laughs> which there have definitely been a couple of occasions where I put up the wrong remix episode or something, <gasps> and then oh, no. and then all the vessel comments are like, "What is this? What? We've already <laughs> seen this." And I go, "Oops, oh, no. Tuesday night, just change this." It's like a video it's of fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Video of Brant left the camera on. And he's like brushing his teeth in the bathroom, and then yeah. people are like, "What?" Just That's security like, oh, cam footage for that for that <laughs> signature bathroom commercial yeah. that he yeah. was doing earlier that day. I was just that saying. Was I was just saying in general, he had the camera running yeah um okay so we're almost about at an hour i think we can hit one more topic if we want to get one in okay uh let's try to flow through this uh deadline one real quick okay so so yeah we we got a uh, a question over over twitter and we kind of had a little bit of a back and forth but I, I felt like it would be good to bring to the table here mm-hmm. especially since twitter is not necessarily the the best venue for long form discourse or anything like that you don't say uh yeah uh, so S- S- Steve as uh, considering how productive you can be in these moments or deadlines enhancements or detractors to your creative potential uh, I personally feel like there's there's a, a, a strange balance to it where it can do both definitely I think soft deadlines are incredibly helpful hard deadlines can be helpful for being productive but can also be destructive as we were talking about earlier with uh, you know, if, if if Scam School has to go up Wednesday at eight, and then Modern Rogue has to go up Thursday at eight or something, yeah. then there's not necessarily enough time to do that. So I will break my body and soul to get that episode out, and that can be right. destructive. But having 
you need some kind of deadline in order to be any kind of successful person because if if you have a YouTube show or if you have a, a Twitch stream or something and you don't have a regular schedule, mm -hmm. uh, then you're not going to be making stuff regularly. You're not going to continually get better. You're not going to flex those muscles. You're not going to like it's uh, you need that kind of thing to grow an audience and to grow your development personally as a creative and so that can be it, it can be tough to balance but dev deadlines are important but it's a double edged sword mm -mm. uh yeah i mean uh when when i first started here i was definitely trying to do stuff ahead of time as much as i could um and and now, um, especially when I have a good idea, like what the week ahead is going to be like, you know, um, I'll, I'll I'll try to get started on stuff a little bit earlier, so at least I can pace it out at a more leisurely rate, um, so that I'm I'm not crunching too much, uh, you know, on like the day of. Mm -hmm. um, though a lot of a lot of the stuff that I do is the podcasts, and so those uh, the deadline on those is more just. You got to be here on time rather than like it's going to be done by a certain time. Yeah. And that sort of has like that loose deadline where yeah. it's kind of expected within X amount of days that that'll go up or whatever. But mm -hmm. the the strict deadline, like live live streaming definitely has a strict deadline where that's kind of a point. That's the last frontier for appointment viewing, I feel mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. Uh, whereas everything else is kind of video on demand and just watch it whenever it goes up. Sure. Um, um, but, but like, especially the past couple of months, um, I feel like I've gotten more efficient at making scam schools. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, sometimes I've, I've been starting them on the day of, on, yeah. uh, which, <laughs> which mostly works out well, except for when it doesn't the, like, what was it a week or two ago? And I found out I did not have the right standups mm -hmm. and I had to restart. But now you have that episode worked on for the next one right did, did sure. you so now you can, now you can just start that one well yeah that starts. that episode's half done <laughs> but we still don't have a stand up for it yeah so um whenever we get to it it's it's half cooked mm -hmm. um but i that was definitely a thing where like i was you know i i i like it because uh, the vessel ones it's a much softer eight o'clock deadline i feel mm -hmm. like uh but that was one that was because like, even mm -hmm. even if you put it up a few hours late they're still getting it a week early right right um, so that was a thing where it went into like midnight, one o'clock, um, after like spending the first half of the day on a completely different episode. Sure. Um, but, but generally I, um, it's, it's tough cause I, I definitely get the benefits of like knowing the pressure is on closer to a deadline. Um, and, and in, I, I know like cognitively I want to start stuff earlier so that I just don't have to have such a huge crunch at the end mm -hmm. that I can just pace it out a little more. Because right. I'd, I'd rather, I, I'm fine, like, if I'm kind of, like, wishy-washy on off all day working on stuff, at least if if I can keep that pace up rather than trying to crunch everything at the last moment. And I know that's how, what I would rather do, but especially the past couple months, it's been a little tougher to get into that right gear. Sure. Um, but I'm also aware of that. So yeah. it's it's always it's always moving I, I think there's also a difference between uh, in hard deadlines between something like my my corporate work where they'll they'll give me footage and they'll say okay we need we need this series of videos done in four weeks on this specific day mm -hmm. and I go okay great uh, like I have tons of time to work on it I can portion that out however I want as long as I get it done by a certain day yeah I can schedule that out that's that's great because it keeps me productive and it gives me it gives me a target to shoot for. Um, whereas if and then that differs from something like Scam School, where Scam School is, you know, weekly on a very specific time. Over, but it's not just like a one-off project; it's recursive over years. And so at first you go great, and like I can schedule that out, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then week after week it like it kind of wears you down, and then it, it well, especially because the flexibility of it mm -hmm. lets you know, oh well, if I needed to, I could start it on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. The, yeah. the, if I needed to, uh, yeah. is like because I have stuff for shipping things out that is like, well, if I need to, 
mm-hmm. I can pull this funky like behind the scenes like shipping thing, yeah. mm-hmm. and well, it'll yeah. actually save us money, and we don't have to do it right away. <laughs> and then it'll be, but it <laughs> it does not save us any time whatsoever. And yeah. and usually there's about ten things that are different every time that I don't expect that I have no idea will just complete like just extra work I need to do now to kind of make everything function, mm-hmm. just because everything fits a certain way and if you do something unique with how you fulfill things since so much stuff is automated it's like you have to tell all the automation no 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 i'm doing this and this <laughs> like all this other stuff so mm-hmm. yeah the the if the if i need to is like the <laughs> i and i always fall into it i'm always yeah. like oh yeah if we need yeah that's no problem uh, because then by the time mm-hmm. i did it i'll forget how hard it was. Uh, One of the other wrinkles of doing the live podcasts is that, especially on Monday and Tuesday, which should be like prime get up on scam school days, Mm -hmm. uh, Quid Killers, which is on Monday, and Night Attack, which is on Tuesday, both of those are in the evening. Uh, So Quid Killers is a little earlier in the day. It's about 6 o'clock. And so I'll get out of here about 8, 8.30, depending. Um, but I have to go home and the processing for cord killers, because it's a video podcast, it can be another two or three hours. And, and so you, have been under the lights for, for so long and you you have your computer, which is already just like uh, at a hundred percent, just processing this video as fast as it can go. Um, and so like you have like that mixture of like dead time. And then when it's done, it's just, it feels late in the day. And I and so that makes Monday tough, and then night attack is a little later on Tuesday, so uh, you know those can go four or five hours, just depending on how the show, the the after shows go. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's another thing where I just get home and I'm just like exhausted. But 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 the other main problem with that is that because it's so so later in the day, then what I would like to consider my free time would be earlier in the day. And then it's just like this shrinking window between, oh, I need to leave and, oh, I was able to eat lunch today. Right. Like just just weird – that weird flip-flop of like off time and on time make those days especially tough. For sure. Yeah, it, it definitely introduces a complex dynamic to the whole situation. Yeah. But then if you have something where there's like no deadlines, I, I do a podcast, Cinematography, youtube.com slash cinematography. Talkography. Talkography. Uh, yes. And – it, you know, we have no deadline. We kind of just do it in our free time, mm-hmm. uh, just whenever we get the chance. And because of that, there's an episode I've been working on for a year, mm-hmm. and <laughs> that video essay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, it theoretically it's, should be a great episode as soon as it comes <laughs> out. And it's not just when you have the free time, but then it's also when you want to. Yeah, which is like. For, Real for, rough. for me, there are few motivating factors more motivating than feeling like I'm late, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I cannot imagine many worse feelings than, oh, no, I've done something wrong. This is supposed to have been done, and it's not, and I need to get it out of my system. Mm-hmm. Uh, so deadlines are super helpful for that, and if, if, if you don't have it, it can just, it can just stack. Indefinitely. Uh, so I think that's going to do it for the March 2016 Bizarre Briefing. What a doozy. The Whew. views the views I express are that of myself and not my employers or my coworkers. <laughs> yeah, that got a little hot there. Uh, Brant, if people want more hot takes. Whoa. Whoa. You can find them all on Twitter, twitter.com slash Gatowag, G-A-T-O-W-G. Also, I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing Instagram these days. Oh, are you? Are you doing the gram? Well, mostly. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, Insta? I'm mostly uploading my, my back catalog of photos there slowly because I used to do Flickr uh-huh. a lot. and That explains some of the things I've seen you post on Twitter. Yeah, like some older stuff, right? Yeah. And I, Flickr used to be like this big thriving photo community. And I got locked out of my account because I used 
an email from like 15 years ago and oh I, I have no way to access it because it's all like Yahoo stuff and it's just been super unhelpful and my 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 recovery account was some AOL account that I don't have <laughs> access to. I don't yeah, even it's know. A lot, it's, it'd have to be older. Yeah. Yeah. But it sucks because I still get email notifications sent to brand at brainhughes.com. Oh, no. So it's like, wh- what am I supposed to do? Yeah. So I'm just like, burn it all down. I'm going to throw some <laughs> stuff on Instagram. Hopefully, I'll get back into a little bit more photography stuff. Also, sometimes I do live streaming, twitch.com slash gatawag. Is that uh, Instagram.com slash gatawag? Twitch.tv. Uh, yeah, it's just gatawag. Cool. There. John. Yeah, uh, twitter.com slash John Tilton, J O N T I L T O N. Uh, still, I'm like not really full back here. You're, 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 you're dipping I your just, toe in. You're just, I just turned around. In, I just avoided Star Wars spoilers, but then instantly transformed into an old man. <laughs> is what happened. <laughs> but uh, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about the product releases this month, so I just wanted to quick say, if you mm-hmm. haven't checked out the Worst Aid Kit, um, it hasn't been super popular, but I do believe it is the best packaging that we have done on any release. So it's worth just going to like look at yeah. kind of the cool job that we did. And um, it looks yeah. like it's, it's very, I cool. think the video that you guys put together also turned out super rad too. I, and that was, that, that was just a, a, a fun project. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it would be cool to uh, make sure everyone at least looks Check at it out. It. You yeah. don't have to buy mm-hmm. it, but just like, I'm really proud of it. So it's stuff. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Brightcast, B R Y C A S. You can find me on Twitch at Brightcast, B R Y C A S. I want to. Uh, You've been making plug. music lately. Right. Uh, yeah. I've been. Uh, I, just last night or the other night, I was making some music on there. And I was actually, I was actually really happy with how that went. Because sometimes, like the time, the time I was tr- trying to stream right before it, it kept crashing. And I just had to rage quit like 40 minutes in. I was like, <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to get. Frustrated, but uh, so so I've been doing some of that. Uh, I, I stream some games and stuff too. Um, one thing I do want to plug is something I'm gonna be putting out next week. Um, is uh, I, I use the Apple Music um, streaming service, right? Mm-hmm. And I really like it, and it's really my only option for like a streaming service because I I need a music locker, um, and I don't like the Google Play thing. Sure. Uh, and and so. I've had like people ask me about like the music that we play on the live streams and before the shows and all, um, and so I'm thinking of doing like a newsletter hmm. um, every two weeks or so. That is, and there's a playlist that goes associated with it of just like all the new stuff that I find, and the newsletter will have a little bit of information about what it is and stuff to keep an eye out. Um, so if, if you're interested and you have Apple Music, go to nashcom.com/playlists. Uh, or just hit the playlist button at the top. Hmm. Um, I'm 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 excited for it. I've already got. Uh, I'm already working on the next. Uh, so anyway, the first the the first like official one will go out next week, um, and I think it's a really cool list. And um, it's weird because like I'm going through Mailchimp and setting it up, and I'm just like seeing all like the default thing for a picture with a caption is like the picture. And then like it says forty nine ninety nine, and then it's got a buy now button, and I'm like weird because I don't want to. I'm not trying to make any money off of it. Right. I just want like to have this thing where we can share music and stuff. So I it's it's a fun thing. Uh, check it out uh, at nishcom.com. Uh, this show uh, you can also find it at nishcom.com. Go to nishcom.com slash tbb to get the podcast RSS link, the iTunes link. Um, and subscribe, 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 and uh, g- <laughs> give us a five star rate and review. Why don't you? Sure. We're not even trying to uh, campaign for it. Just give us. A we'll five even star. accept a Do four it. star review. No, shut up. We'll just give us a five no star. No four stars. No four star. Absolutely no, not. You had better justify a three star review. Well, it's one of those things <laughs> where, <laughs> like, I, the um, I, when I went to pre-order the uh playstation vr uh, you go and because it hasn't come out yet so you have you know just the ratings are stupid so you got all these like five star ratings and then i kid you not people go and they put one star and they their review text says to balance out the fanboys and it's like right well you're just doing the same like you're c- committing the same thing you're mad at someone about like just leave it alone like it'll balance out once the thing comes out that's fine mm-hmm. but anyway okay 
Uh, we will get, we <laughs> see you guys in Sorry. April. I, I always have to have some sort of rant. No, it's fine. The also, patented- we're on this game stuff YouTube. Yes, yeah. If you're not watching this, uh, if you're watching the, or if you're listening to this and not watching it, check out youtube.com slash scam stuff. And while you're there, you can check out the awesome outtake episodes that have been on there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or the unboxings, all both of them. Unboxings, yeah. yeah. We should do more unboxings. We should. We don't have a whole lot to unbox. Not, like the last, right now, but <laughs> like we could have unboxed, like the prank kit. Well, we basically, you basically unbox the prank kit during the Modern Rogue episode. Right. Mm. In any case. So. Let's end this show so people can go on to the next episode. <laughs> yeah, Thank you for, for listening and watching. Later. We'll see you guys next month. Bye. Bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>